Well, what a very appropriate gospel for us to hear. We are reminded that God has set his seal upon us as well, and he did that in his baptism. And we have answered him because we do believe that he sent his son and that he has empowered us to act as disciples of his son as well. In today's gospel, we hear how the crowds are, uh, the crowds have been fed by Jesus, so many of them. And then Jesus departs, and what do they do? But they're looking for him, and they can't find him. So with a little bit of Yankee ingenuity, even way back then, they decided that they would get in boats and they would search him out. And they did find him. And he spoke to them, and he spoke to them about the bread of life. And how the bread of life, the Eucharist, is what is going to fill them and is going to give them all the power in the grace of God to do tremendous things inside their lives. The necessary part is they believe that it is the power of God in the Eucharist itself. It is inspiring to think of them getting into the boats and really appreciating all that the Son of Man is, that no matter what it took, they were going to be in his presence. Then we're presented in the first reading with another example of somebody who truly understood in a deep and abiding way what the Eucharist is, and what it can do for one in one's union with God himself. And that's the story of Stephen himself. We hear Stephen the deacon, he is the first martyr of the church that we, we, that we, we celebrate right after Christmas. But we hear about how he's standing before the Jewish rulers, but they see inside of him, as it says inside him, that his face was like an angel. They realized there was goodness inside there they realized all his actions were of goodness. Unfortunately, they would have him stoned to death. And that's the nature of evil that's in our society, that jealousy can really rear its ugly head inside people's lives, threaten their positions in some ways. And so they take some beautiful creature, which would be Stephen, and they take his life in that way. It is the, it is the saddest part that the devil can work in people's lives and manipulate them to make poor choices or bad choices, certainly choices that are contrary to God's choice, desire for us to have happiness. But we ourselves, when we're fed by the Eucharist, are able to, are able to increase that union with God in a special way. Now, I know at this point we can't do that because we can't, receive, we can't get to public masses to receive communion. But there is that great grace that's given to us in spiritual communion to long to receive the Eucharist so deeply and so greatly as many of you do brings about a tremendous grace that God gives you. See, God cannot be defeated and God cannot be manipulated in those ways. God's grace still comes into this world. And I'll tell you, I have seen this myself and I find great joy in celebrating the Mass, and as I look to the future, I look to the future with great optimism and happiness. Oh, I'll be honest with you, if you think I want to be wearing a mask and hiding this beautiful face and depriving you of the joy of such incredible handsomeness, you're mistaken. You all deserve that. However, on the other hand, for the protection of the good people who are filming us here, this is the least I can do we do take on sacrifices inside our lives, and we do it for the sake of our love of God. Now, so many of you are home-ridden, and you can't get out. And then there is an added group now of those who aren't able to get the Mass because we don't offer public Mass, but still want to watch the daily Mass because you have the time now that you're home. And I think, and I think of those people who are homebound, you know, all the prayers they've offered and how faithful they have been to the daily Mass. And we always say to them to remember that their ministry is so important for they pray for humanity and they have faith and trust in God that God's going to provide for them. And in this time in which our world is dealing with a pandemic, here in the United States, we thank you for your prayers because they have had an effect and sometimes we don't think that they do, but they have. 
they have projected that we would have, you know, about to 150 or 200 thousand dollars, 200 thousand deaths in this country through this virus, and we're at 47 thousand. And they're not expecting that we're going to see even 100,000 in the number of deaths. Oh, certainly 47,000 is way too many. But what I'm saying here is that God has worked in humanity through us to prevent and to lessen that amount of deaths inside there. And how has that happened? Well, one example is this funny priest wearing a mask inside here so that no one else here you know, would receive any of the droplets of, uh, in case, let's say I were a carrier or something. This is why we do this. And so many of you folks are doing this. You're doing the supermarkets, you're doing the streets, you're doing it in your cars. And yes, my glasses fog up. This is not something that I love doing at all. But if this is what I could do to save one person's life, wouldn't it be worth doing inside there? And so, so many people... We see so many people caring for others in this pandemic, so many heroic people. And I'm not just talking about the obvious medical personnel, but I'm talking about you and I who go off there and pray for them. You know, for us, each night at 7 p.m., we recite the rosary uh, inside my parish. We live stream it, and people pray with us inside that rosary and in that adoration. And it has power. It has effect. And regardless of whether you're watching it or whether you're praying the rosary at home, we're praying the rosary and we're evoke and asking God to invoke his blessing upon us and to help us. And how many hearts have you seen in your community moved with great acts of love? How many? I've seen a tremendous amount. And so that's how I know the Lord Jesus is alive and well and active in our communities because every time we see these acts of selfless love, we see how God's seal has been set upon humanity. And we continue to ask God's blessing that we may persevere and that we may continue to wear our gloves, to wear our masks, to stay six feet apart from other people, to stay away from parties and things like that for the sake of strangers, for the sake of humanity itself. How blessed we are to have your ministry. And may God bless you, and may we continue to pray, thanking God for his gifts and imploring God for his further gifts for us.